Hello, and welcome to this online edition of OU Nightly. I'm Tori King, coming to you from Norman, Oklahoma. While COVID-19 forces us all off OU's campus and out of our newsroom, we are dedicated to bringing you this newscast. We begin tonight with a growing death toll from COVID-19 in the Sooner State. In the latest update, the Oklahoma death toll recorded eight new deaths today. This brings the state's total to 88. Today's numbers also show 110 additional confirmed cases of COVID-19. Oklahoma's confirmed case total rounds out at 1,794. Experts at the Oklahoma State Department of Health suggest Oklahoma is still about 10 days away from its peak in cases. At a press conference this morning, Governor Kevin Stitt said the state is ready for a surge in patients. Uh, we are projected to see 1,115 uh, beds needed. That's what the model shows. Even on the high end of the model, uh, around 2,698 beds, the great news is Oklahoma has 4,633 hospital beds specifically uh, designed for COVID patients in the state of Oklahoma. So we have created tremendous capacity. Oklahoma's were in good shape. Researchers emphasize that social distancing and restrictions on businesses are working to flatten the curve of cases in Oklahoma. Across the Red River, the Texas Health Department reports the total of cases now stand at 11,600. 266 deaths due to COVID-19 come from both Harris County, where Houston's located, and Dallas County. Texas is seeing a significantly high number of jobs lost due to business closures as well. More Texans filed for unemployment in the last month alone than in the entire year of 2019. According to the Texas Workforce Commission, over the last four weeks, nearly 760,000 Texans applied for unemployment. Also happening in Texas and around the country, all XFL employees found themselves without a job today, including employees for the Dallas Renegades and the Houston Roughnecks. Today, Jeffrey Pollack, the XFL's chief operating officer, said the league is suspending all operations and is terminating its employees. This comes as the season was suspended after only five games due to COVID-19 concerns. Although a handful of executives remain, officials have no current plans for the season to return in 2021. The U.S. saw 27,000 new cases overnight, bringing its total to nearly half a million. Researchers at the University of Washington are predicting this weekend to be the peak for COVID-19, as far as national cases go. While that's good news, experts say it is not yet time to ease up on the restrictions. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to get out there prematurely and then wind up your back back in the same situation. That's why many cities and states are continuing the restrictions for the next couple of weeks. Experts advise everyone not to gather with extended family or friends over the Easter weekend and most churches are going to be closed for health precautions. The latest global COVID-19 numbers reveal a grim reality as the worldwide death toll surpasses 100,000 today. Currently, the total deaths around the globe sit at 102,000, raising COVID-19's fatality percent to 21%. Around the globe, more than 1.6 million cases are now being reported, and nearly 400,000 have recovered. Both Spain and Italy recorded a little over 500 deaths for the day, a decrease from yesterday's numbers. As COVID-19 impacts families and businesses across the country, a group of OU students aren't letting this defeat their chances of winning Oklahoma City's Entrepreneurship Expo. OU Nightly's Lindsay Gibbs has more. In just a few days, four OU students will be headed to the final round of the Loves Cup Entrepreneurship Expo for $25,000. Meeting. After meeting, after meeting. Yeah, definitely. This group of OU students prepare for their final presentation. All right, go through each session. The student's company called Eat provides a subscription for coupons to local Norman restaurants. Just because it's great experience, you know, building uh, teamwork um, and just getting to know the ups and downs of entrepreneurship as a whole. The only thing standing in their way is COVID-19. It's really hard sometimes to get into what we call like a group flow where everyone's kind of been talking for an hour and things kind of are starting to speed up and you're kind of getting that brainstorming mindset. And it's, it's a difficult thing to do on the phone, but it's possible and we've learned that it's possible. However, since the outbreak, many of the restaurants on board with the company closed. Obviously, COVID-19 is affecting all aspects of the economy. It's definitely an opportunity too because a lot of these local restaurants uh, are going to be hit pretty hard and a lot of them won't survive. 
And so driving consumers to get back out to those local restaurants is going to be really important. The team is one of six that remain and will present their final pitch for the business in front of investors on Monday, April 13th. For more information about EAT, you can visit the company's Facebook page spelled E-A-T-E. Reporting from my home in Lindsay, Texas, Lindsay Gibbs, OU Nightly. Oh! oh. Susie, come here. Susie, come here. I feel bad for the dog in there. Uh-oh. Ah. Uh. Welcome back to OU Nightly. What you just saw there was a dog kennel being tossed in the wind yesterday in Thrall, Texas. They had some damaging severe thunderstorms move through with some very strong wind gusts just north of Austin and south of Dallas and for the most part stayed well south of Oklahoma as a whole. We only got some scattered cloud cover here and there yesterday, but for the most part we were dry. Overnight last night those clouds pretty much moved off to the east with that system leaving us with mostly clear skies today, but for some places that that's not going to be the case for the entire days. We do have a low end chance of rain further to the west. Some of those could be thunderstorms as well. They should stay well below severe limits, but we're going to keep an eye on that as this afternoon and evening evolves. However, tomorrow we do now have a slight risk in effect for the southern portions of our state. This does include Ardmore, mainly for perhaps some large hail we could see in some places. And also in Norman, we have a marginal risk, and this is primarily for the damaging straight line winds and hail threat as well. So that's what we're looking at in terms of severe weather, but now I'm going to toss it to Juliana, who's got an update on Norman, Oklahoma, and what we're going to see over the next several days, and even an Easter forecast coming right up. <laughs> Thank you, Nash. Yeah, I'm here in Norman enjoying the warm, beautiful sun while it lasts. There's some people out behind me uh, playing basketball too because going into this weekend, conditions are going to look very different and they're not going to be ideal for any Easter egg hunting come Sunday. We're going to be left with quite some wet and muddy grass. Uh, looking into this weekend, looking at the radar, we're expecting some thunderstorms and rain. Definitely, the, for the most part, down in the southeastern corner of the state, though we do have a significant chance for some thunderstorms to be here in Norman tomorrow as well. And moving into our seven day forecast, I want to point out, look at the low temperature on Sunday night. Uh, it drops down all the way to 30 and that's because we're expecting a cold front to come through on Sunday. Our winds are going to switch around coming from the northwest. Do expect it to be gusty as well and that's also why you see our rain chances continuing through the top of next week as well because of the passing of that cold front. Hello, and thanks for sticking with OU Nightly. I'm Abby Bennett, coming to you from Dallas, Texas, to give you the latest with what's going on in the sports world. We begin tonight with the planned UFC 249 fights for April 18th, having been officially canceled. UFC President Dana White had been vowing for weeks for the fights to maintain a regular schedule as the sports world has come to a halt. Partnerships like ESPN and Disney had asked White to cancel the fights because they did not feel as if it was the right time for a variety of reasons. But don't worry, because White has said he is still pursuing his plan to build an octagon and everything necessary to telecast small fight shows on an unidentified private island. And as many events in the sports world have either been canceled or postponed, many teams in the NBA have joined together to push the date of the draft back. The draft is set as of now for June 25th, but teams are wanting the draft to be no sooner than August 1st. Top team executives have expressed that shifting the date would give organizations more time to salvage essential elements of the pre-draft process, possibly allowing for in-person workouts, interviews, and medical evaluations of prospects that current guidelines of the coronavirus make impossible. And with the NBA coping by competing in online games, the MLB has decided to do the same. The MLB is set to launch a competitive show league, which will feature players from all 30 MLB teams. Starting today, the league will begin a 29-game regular season, which will last through April 28th. And there's also a charity aspect to it. The MLB, Sony, and the MLBPA will donate $5,000 for each of the 30 players to give back. And the player who wins the World Series will get a $25,000 donation on their behalf. That is all I have for now. I hope you all are staying safe and staying inside. I'm Abby Bennett from Dallas, Texas. Thanks, Abby. And thank you for watching this online edition of OU Nightly, brought to you by our teams working remotely from both Oklahoma and Texas. Reporting from Norman, Oklahoma, I'm Tori King. 
We leave you with these images of the university thanking those risking their lives on the front lines. Good night.